So to throw down some type, the type tool is down here. You know, it's just it's like the letter T. If you click and hold on it, oh, my, my computer's being a bit weird. If you click and hold on it, there's also like a vertical type tool, a vertical type mask tool, which I've never used, and a horizontal type mask tool. I imagine those may be to create cutouts uh, with typography, but so go ahead and explore with those. You can't break it. Just go ahead and try it out, but I'm just going to go with the regular, the regular horizontal type tool. Um, notice up at the top I've got some, some control bar stuff that comes up right away, like choosing a font, and you can drop that down and choose, you know, from all your fonts. You can add fonts from Typekit, which is a really cool thing since you have an Adobe Creative License. If you tap on Typekit, that little T up there at the top, it'll bring up a bunch of different libraries. You choose different fonts that you want, like let's say I want to add this Gastromond font. I tap on it, Typekit takes me to it, and I can add it to a kit or I can sync it to my to basically my laptop Adobe account. And now Gastromond should be in this list somewhere. Sometimes if you just tap D or G, it will take you down to the G's right away. And I have Gastromond regular as my font. So that's a font that I did not have on my machine. That's part of Adobe Typekit. There's thousands of them, right? And you can just immediately sync them in and use them. So I just typed in good day. You can see I went a little bit off the off the artboard here, so I'm just going to switch to my move tool and drag good day to the middle of my artboard. Okay. So I selected a font at the top. Now to make any changes once you've typed that in, go back to your type tool and just highlight stuff or just or just click where you want to add, you know, another letter. Or but basically you want to be back on the type tool if you want to make changes. If you want to change the font, again you can sort of drop this down, choose from your fonts, or add more from Typekit. Thousands and thousands of fonts. Once you've chosen a font, like if I choose Fira Sands, then that's the family. This is the font family, and many of them have, you know, individual font options inside of the family. I can switch things to extra bold. I can go bold, italic, you know, some families have like dozens and dozens of options here. Over here on the size, you can scrub back and forth on the big and little T to change size, or you can manually key in like digits here, like say 72, or you can drop down and choose from some of their presets. Over here with sharp, strong, smooth, I, I never use this, but I imagine it just it does things basically to the edges of your typography to make it sharper or smoother or whatever. I'm not sure what these what these fellows are. But if you really want a robust set of type tools, generally you can tap on this little this little palette icon here. And then your whole character and paragraph palettes come up and it's got all these other options on it. Again, you've got sizing, you've got uh, what we would call like Letting or line height. You've got kerning. A lot of these have drop downs that you can just drop down and choose from. You just want to experiment with all this stuff and see what it does to the type. You've got like bold, italics, superscript, ligatures, all this type of stuff here. You just really want to play around with this stuff. So the basic idea is you type with the type tool, then you can use these commands up here, or you can tap on your palette and get your character tool up, and you can just mess around with typography all day long. Now to change a color in your type, once you've got it there, if you just double tap like that and choose a different color, nothing's going to happen because you don't actually have any characters selected. So with your type tool, if you want to change the color, actually select the characters you want to change. And you can tap right here on the color. I got just the G because whatever. You can also double tap down here with it selected choose OK. So the basic idea for changing colors is to first select the actual characters that you want to change. That's in Photoshop. Other, like Illustrator does it a bit differently. You can just tap the whole text block with your selection tool and then you can adjust the colors. But in Photoshop, mainly sort of the quickest and easiest way to do it is to actually select all of your type and just make changes. 
so that's kind of an overview again nothing nothing groundbreaking here today does anybody have anything specific that they want to see if you go into the paragraph tab there's a bunch of formatting options like alignment to the left alignment to the right center aligned you can do indentations you can add hyphenation if you're doing paragraph in a in a block all that type of stuff so there's good stuff under the paragraph tab as well anybody with questions about typography I want to show you a few things with type layers just so you understand about the layers sometimes you get all done with your type it's just how you want but you want to add some effects to it you want to like drop a shadow on it you want to stroke it you want to paint on it or something like that right so what you do is you go over here to your layers and you'll notice that my good day is in an it's in an editable typography layer this is not a fully this layer that my good day lettering is in is not um, totally artist. It's, you can't do all the art to it because it's an editable type layer. So what you can do is if you tap this drop down here, you should be able to tell it to rasterize that layer. Maybe not. I may need to go under layer up here. Under layer and rasterize, you can tell it to rasterize the type, or you can tell it to rasterize the whole layer. I'm pretty sure in this instance, both those things will do the same thing. Or you can tell it to rasterize all layers, uh, but generally, if you just tell it to rasterize that type. Now, I can't any longer click and edit on this stuff with my type tool because it's no longer text. It is now letter art, right? But what I can do now is I could like lock all my transparent pixels I could get a different color in my brush, like a blue or something. And I could get me a big old brush. And I could, you know, put a highlight along the bottom of it. You know what I'm saying? Now I can treat it like art. I can paint on it. I can do stuff to it. I can throw a grading on it. Once it's a layer, I can hit my FX down here. I can throw like a, a stroke on it, which you generally don't do. On type you generally don't just like throw a stroke on it but in this case because giggles we're doing it All right so now it's got like a stroke on it I can dial that down a bit um, you know I can drop a shadow on it you know the usual you probably can't really see that but now it's got a little drop shadow on it. so basically I can start to make art out of my type. So again, once you've got your type the way you want it, hit the layer menu at the top and then choose um, rasterize and just go ahead and rasterize the type or the layer, whichever one you want, and then you can start painting on it, you know, move it around, make it grungy, basically treat it like art, but it's no longer editable as type once you rasterize the layer. So you want to sort of use the type tool to get your all your letter forms and everything just how you want them maybe get the right color on it and then when you want to start dressing it up or affecting it in Photoshop rasterize that layer and then use the layer tools now one thing I may have shown you here that I may not have shown you before was when I only wanted to mess with the letters themselves and not any of the transparent pixels around them I tap this little lock transparency icon right here that'll work for any kind of layer any layer where you have some art and some transparent pixels and you don't want to have to select all your art right because otherwise you have to select everything and to be careful to only paint on that if it's only the transparent pixels or the empty space that you don't want to affect you can just lock the empty space you can lock those transparent pixels with this little layer shortcut right here and it's a really handy tool for like if you're copying and pasting in vector art or using type or you, you know you've, you've got something that's surrounded by just empty space and you don't want to paint you don't have to make all these selections to paint. You can just lock the empty space, and it will, in essence, just select what's visible, and then you can just go crazy on it like we did. All right, so questions about type. I'm going to go ahead and stop the little...